we were in the throes of performing the complete vocal works of Bach and the pandemic rather threw that proposition off the rails. We had to find a way of negotiating the fact that we wouldn't be able to perform for a, a good length of time. So it was quickly decided that we would just suspend for an entire year and resume where we left off. And here we are a year from Good Friday last year, um, still with the possibility of not having any live performances going on, but looking at other innovative ways of making it work. How I found art, right, so I was really, really ill um, and ended up living on the streets of London, uh, street homeless. And at that time, obviously my life had fallen apart completely and it found me, it saved my life. It gave me a purpose, it gave me confidence, it gave me resilience. Um, it gave me something to focus on and really sort of like engage with. And I think that's something I'd been struggling with. It's been a really difficult time, obviously, for the arts. Um, you know, we've all lost work and commitments and exhibitions and stuff like that. I, I'm not really bothered about that. I'm bothered about how arts engage with in general from, from communities. So during the pandemic, it really shone a light on it because suddenly you had Instagram art schools popping up. You know, you had children's art schools. You had obviously Grayson on telly and his, his Channel 4 program. You had Sky Arts becoming a free channel. You know, radio podcasts. It was just a massive influx of the arts, right? The importance of art was shown. When the pandemic struck, Oxford Bach Cellarist had lined up a team to perform the St John Passion on Good Friday and uh, it was very clear that that wasn't going to happen. As I was driving home feeling a bit despondent after all the news, um, I got a phone call from Dan Norman and uh, he said that he was starting on a project to see if we could do it remotely stitching together different performances of different lines together in a virtual performance. Rather sort of last minute said to me, oh, um, I know you've got a team lined up, would you like to see if we can collaborate on this? And of course, I was feeling so upset about not being able to do it for the first time in many years that I jumped at the chance and Positive Note was born. There's been lots of talk in the media of, of the children missing out on their maths and their English and catching up with that. Um, but it seems to me, at least, that, that that isn't really what they've missed out on. What they've missed out on are, are sporting activities, being together, socialising, growing up and developing their skills in that sense. And, and of course, cultural activities as well, and, um, which is why it's so wonderful to be part of something like this. I think, I think the lockdown, where they were sat in front of their computers all day, was a it was a quite a tough time, really. It was for us all. The process of healing will take, well, a little bit of time. First of all, we need to be able to gather again together and to begin trust, trusting each other. So social distance, masks, this kind of sense of separation and that the other is somebody that we should keep away from. I think part of our human DNA is to be with others. We need each other. Uh, we are not supposed to be isolated creatures. We are, we are people that need a family, need each other. And the idea that uh, we are not only need to look after our body, but after our spirit, is uh, this kind of recognition that we have body and soul, and we need to look after both. It's something that was very much present within this pandemic and so many churches um, be, moved into live streaming, into spiritual communion, wanted to open places of worship for private adoration and prayer so that people could be nourished and fed spiritually. And I think that's what your program is doing as well, as, as was able to gather musicians from their home, create beautiful music that otherwise could be heard within one building and then share it with others. CCLA is an investment management firm and we work with uh, a large number of charities and, and church organisations and, and through that lens we've seen many of the challenges that society and individuals have faced and also the challenges of buildings like this being uh, closed, musicians not being able to perform and many other things. So when we heard about the uh, Breaking the Silence project we were really keen to get involved and to be honest it's a real honour we've been able to uh, get involved in this project and, and bring, take it through to fruition. 
Yes, so uh, uh, breaking the silence, which, which is exactly what I guess we're doing with this project. Um, and it, it was wonderful when Positive Note got in touch with me. Um, it, it was incredibly fortuitous, really, be, because in the first lockdown, we, we had spent time learning some of the B minor mass. Uh, we were planning on performing the piece ourselves. Uh, as we came back to school then in September, it was clear that, that the, it wasn't going to happen. So it was really very lovely then to get the call and ask us to be part of this, because it means that, that the, the time we'd spent um, wasn't for nothing. So with a bit of a revision, the boys were up and running again, singing the opening Kyrie. It was a wonderful thing to be part of, really, and, and the boys have loved doing it, I think. It's, it's, it's really come together very nicely for us, and we're you know, delighted to be part of this. To hear music, um, it's so important for us because music always touches a kind of note within us, uh, kind of trans has a transcendent aspect. So, so we all need the sound, a positive sound, uplifting sound, to help us to um, to move in that in our on our Christian journey. I've been volunteering now at The Passage for coming up to five years. I create a space where people can just come and be, and I think that's really important. I think just being in the space is an artistic element in itself. Originally, it was uh, The Passage was a permanent hostel, but that changed um, and became an assessment hub, and that's when I met Mitchell, because he came in um, as one of the um, residents there. Going to Passage House was a pivotal point in my life. Before I was at Passage House, um, I'd been using night shelters. I was homeless, um, been in and out of prison for a couple of years, serious drug use, shoplifting, in lots of trouble. So I was sleeping in a doorway in um, Westminster, a church doorway. Um, then the No Second Night Out team, they're like an outreach team that uh, go to people who are on the street, they got me into Passage House. I couldn't believe it when I went in the, I was shown the room and I was like, it's just me staying in here. I remember I remember the day. Um, and the staff there were really, really supportive. I didn't meet David straight away. Um, I saw the art group going on, and but while I was there at first, I was quite anxious and I still like had some issues that I was working through, but once I was there for a while, became a bit more stable, started getting a bit more confidence in myself. He's a phenomenal artist, right? Um, and, and I really feel that he could be at the top of his game through illustration. And so I sort of like encouraged him just to be part of the group. I started bringing down some of the drawings that I'd done. Some days I didn't actually do any art in the session. I'd just sit there and chat. Um, like David's a really good person to talk to and I was very inspired about the things that he'd been through because it was similar stuff that I'd been through and it made me think, wow, like this person's been through this, come out the other side and you know, they're doing something constructive with themselves and everything that he talked about, I was really impressed. You know, this is the sort of thing that I want for my life and it gave me like a, like an idea that I could actually turn what I'd been through around and actually, you know, get somewhere positive with it. I am so proud of him, and that's why I really wanted to work with him today, because we'd never done a collaboration, so it's actually quite nice. If we can tackle this and, and show that, you know, art can be there to, you know, help stimulate, to help, like, um, people re-engage, I, I think we will have a far nicer place to live, because I know what art did for me, right? It changed my life, you know, it saved it, it gave me this new purpose. And if it can do it to, for me, it can do it for anyone, you know, and, and I think that's really important.